So you're planning a trip to Germany and obviously you want to get the most out of it. But if you're new to the country, it's not easy to recognize and avoid mistakes that can really detract from your enjoyment. So here are five of them, beginning with the most obvious. Don't make stupid jokes about Hitler and the Nazis and generally don't trivialize the Third Reich. This was a very dark chapter in German history and one which modern Germans find far too horrific to laugh at. They will take a very dim view of, for example, tourists performing the Nazi salute at Holocaust memorials. That's not just grossly disrespectful, it can actually result in a substantial fine or at the very least a stern lecture by some very annoyed police officers who really didn't join the force because they enjoyed interacting with idiots. Not having enough cash is another trap that people fall into. Europeans in general, and Germans in particular, don't much like credit cards and are very suspicious of contactless payments. Cash is still king in Germany and many places don't even accept credit cards. That's not to say that you can never pay by credit card, but don't rely on being able to. Related to that, another mistake is paying in US dollars. In some touristy areas there are places that will accept dollars, but they're quite rare and it's a rip-off. First of all, the exchange rate is exorbitant. Secondly, any change will be given in euros, so you're going to end up with a bunch of euro coins anyway. What you need to do is to take your credit card to a cash machine, an ATM, to withdraw enough euros for the next day or two. It's possible to pay in a foreign currency by credit card, but that's also a rip-off. It's called direct currency conversion and it's sold as a convenient method because it means that you know exactly how much you're being charged in your own currency. But it is in reality just a sneaky way to add a 5% charge to everything. Instead, pay in euros and let your bank do the conversion. Don't think you're getting an authentic experience. As a tourist, you'll be doing touristy things and that's absolutely fine, but most of it was actually invented for your entertainment as a tourist and is only very loosely based on the real culture. Take the famous Schuhplattle dance. That's the one where they leap about, slapping their thighs and feet. They will tell you that it originated in the 11th century, but it's much more likely to be the 19th century. It's what the intellectual urban classes thought represented rural Alpine culture and they were way off the mark. By all means, go and enjoy that kind of stuff. It is fun. Just don't be fooled into thinking that Germans normally spend their time this way or ever did. Finally, perhaps the most common mistake I see tourists making is an over-ambitious itinerary. It's easy to understand the temptation. There is so much to see and do and you want to sample as much of it as you can. But so many people plan a ridiculous journey that involves spending each night in a different hotel and that means that every morning they have to pack and then they spend most of their time travelling, either waiting for trains or sitting in traffic jams. It's exhausting and stressful and they never get to really experience the places they go to. Instead of just zipping about the entire country, pick one or two places and base yourself there. Give yourself time to relax and explore. I recently spent three days in Erfurt and another day in Eisenach just getting enough footage for two videos and I was just walking around those places pointing my camera at things. Sometimes I found time for lunch. I'm not saying you should spend an entire week in one city, although it is perfectly possible to do that and not get bored. I am saying pick and choose your destinations. Don't try to do everything. You can't. So these are five things that I think every visitor to Germany should remember when planning a trip. Apart from that, the most important advice I can offer is enjoy your stay and don't forget your camera. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to send me a postcard, here's the address. And don't forget to visit my website and follow me on Twitter and Facebook. Also, if you'd like access to special bonus content and help with the costs of running this channel, please consider making a small monthly donation on Patreon.